All right, so I've been distracted because I've been playing a bunch of Wuthering Waves, so I kind of forgot the Pure Fiction mode reset. But just like every Pure Fiction reset, I am here with the best characters you should be using for the Pure Fiction guide. This will only be covering stage four because of the specific weaknesses. As you do see, the first stage is weak to fire and physical, and the second one is wind and lightning. That's all I gotta say before I get into the video. Drop a like, drop a sub, hit the bell icon for more videos like this. Again, this video is going to be extremely fast. This is just to give you ideas, not going too into depth. And yeah, let's get straight into it. So as we do see from the effect, it has increased dot taken by the enemy targets by 50%. Enemy targets that receive dot have their damage dealt reduced by 35%. After they are attacked, their action is advanced forward by 35%. When we do take a look at the other roughs here, when the enemy targets are defeated, the dots on them have 100% base chance to be transferred to all enemies. Second one, after the enemy targets enter battle, they become afflicted by wind shear. At the start of every turn, they receive a set amount of wind dot and inflict wind shear on themselves and adjust an enemy targets. Third one, when three or more characters following the path of Nihility are on the team, increases all allies damage up by 60% and speed by 30%. So as you can see, this is very, 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 very tailored towards Dot and this last one part Nihility, but mainly Dot characters. So this is going to be a little different. I'm just sort of to give you ideas. It's for the first time, you can kind of just be flexible with this. But yeah, let's get on to the team ideas. So first, I'm just going to talk about the Nihility characters, mainly Acheron, Kafka, Black Swan. These three mainly because they are Nihility, Akron is practically the strongest DPS in the game, and Kafka is the dot enabler, Black Swan is also fantastic on the team. So with what Black Swan does with the Arcanos, Kafka just enabling dot, her follow attack, all that stuff, it being able to immediately proc the dots. She works fantastic on this, a team with Kafka and Black Swan can practically auto specifically the second stage, because the second stage is weak to lightning and wind. So the second stage they could practically auto it because that's how strong they are and especially with this. Akron, again just strong, they're all weak to lightning and because she is Nihility. As we do know, if you do not have an E2 Akron, we do know that she does the two Nihility characters with one of her traces right here, doing more damage. And that ties into the third buff very, very well because you need three Nihility characters. So counting her as one, running two other Nihility characters, and now you have a 60% damage dealt increased, and you also have 30% speed. So Akron is also very good on this, but again, Black Swan, Kafka, and these three are very, very strong. Your general go to is Himiko is going to be really good because there are fire weakness enemies, especially on the first half, mainly on the first half, I should say. So Himiko is obviously going to work there really well. Don't really got to talk about her much as we do know Himiko is always good. I'm going to mention her regardless despite there not being enemies weak to ice. I know she doesn't actually need the weakest break but because they're not weak to ice it's a little, it's a little, little, little difficult. But because of how good she is especially in this mode you definitely do not need ice weakness enemies. If you pair her on a proper team she can be very very good. Especially because free to play you get all these dupes for free so you have this very very powerful Herda just able to just go crazy. Himiko and Herda are practically just good in every perfection anyways. Gunaipin is very, very, very good, especially in the first half, because she is one Nihility and two a dot character. And since she is fire, the first stage is mainly weak to fire. The second one has some fire, but mainly the first one. She does have all the fire affliction she can do. Fire dot, very, very good. She's able to immediately proc the fire dot with her ultimate. And especially with fire kiss giving you increased damage, benefiting her, benefiting the entire team, any other DPS with her. So if you're running her with anyone else, you don't even have to put her on a dot team. I think I did and they're trying one team where I just had her with some other characters that weren't even Dot or Nihility, and she still was performing very good. And especially because she's a four-star, you might have these dupes, and she does have really good dupes. Being able to reduce target enemies effect res, multiply the burn, gaining more fire kits if you have the E6, being able to also regenerate more energy with the E4 to have faster alts, which is just very good. So Gunaipid is also very, very, very strong on this one. And then another general two DPSs for the first two is Clara and... Argenti, I'd reverse that, but yeah, Argenti and Clara. So Argenti being able to practically be an FGO looper with the ultimate. Since the first half, I'm going to also, again, reiterate, first half, you probably want to run these two on the first half. You can probably take Clara in the second half if you really want to, but I would advise against it. Definitely take these on the first half because, again, they're physical. Clara with the several counters is extremely powerful. Constantly doing that, constantly being able to break them, constantly doing physical damage. Anyone on your team gets hit, and it plays very well because when you do hit the enemy, their action is advanced forward. So, the more they attack you, the more counters you get off. And since she does have a built-in taunt as well, with the ultimate, overall she's a very, very strong character to the dish out damage. Argenti, on the other hand, again, practically always just looping his ultimate over and over and over again. With a proper setup, you can practically always just use the ult. Occasionally, you use the skill to get some energy. And if you do get the 180 ult, that absolutely shreds through anyone you need to kill. And the regular ult is practically enough to deal with any of the small enemies. Needs maybe two to three to kill the bigger enemies. But Argenti is also very, very strong on this as well. Another character I do actually want to recommend is Sampo. Sampo hasn't seen too much play, but he is win. And the second half, again, being weak to win, he's really good on the second half. 
being able to do bounce for wind, being able to inflict wind shear, also making the enemies take increased dot damage. So putting Sampo with someone like Kafka, let's say you don't have someone like Black Swan, is extremely strong on this. And again, this being AOE, this being bounce, being able to have a chance to inflict wind shear, just being a dot character and being Nihility, this plays very well into it. And with them being so weak to wind on the second half, he is also a very strong character. And again, just like any other four star, because he is a four star, you have a chance, depending on the player, to have a bunch of dupes on him. And his dupes are also really nice. Especially with this, making them take more wind shear damage. So, overall, Sampo is also very powerful. Last DPS I want to talk about is obviously Jake Wan, because they are weak to lightning. He isn't a dot character, but with his lightning lord being able to hit like an absolute truck, with the proper setup, especially with someone like Sparkle, you are able to get the 10 stacks for lightning lord really easily. And when you do have the lightning lord hit, it absolutely shreds through who you have on the field. As well, Jing Wad is also a nice option, but again, I'd only recommend him on the second half where they are mainly weak to lightning. Otherwise, he won't be that powerful. For Harmony Buffers, I definitely want to talk about Robin because Robin is absolutely insane in Pure Fiction, just like the other top tiers with her. With her being extremely skill point positive, being able to give everyone damage though, which everyone can benefit from. Enter the Concerto State, doing additional physical damage so you can deal more damage, which can help you wiggle down enemies even faster. Not only that, but giving everyone another turn. She also enables you to use follow-up attack teams on this. I'm not going to talk about follow-up characters because they aren't too powerful on this one. But she enables you to do that because of how they work. But using her on a dot team is very good because of the attack percent given, the additional turn given as well, and also being able to do additional physical damage. So Robin is also a very, very good idea. Just like usual, Sparkle is also absolutely broken on this. You pair her with any DPS that wants to do damage. So pairing her with someone like Akron is really good on this as well. Getting the crit damage just given to anyone with a 50% action forward is so broken. This for everyone, giving everyone damage increase. And just giving you a bunch of skill points because pure fiction, you're mostly going to be spamming skills. Besides a few characters like Ruan Mayer or Robin who are skill point of positive. Rockwell is just going to be really strong on this. Again, just giving a bunch of buffs, giving attack percent with this. And everything Sparkle does is just really good for this mode. Ruan May, no shocker, obviously very good. Skill, very skill point positive, giving everyone damage increase and weakness break efficiency. So if you are actually corresponding to the weakness types you need to break them, Ruan May becomes that much better. Moving on to the sustains. So Aventurian is obviously just going to be really good because he's just he's, he's just good everywhere. You mainly don't want to use him on the dot team, but you still can. I did it and it was actually completely fine. Giving everyone a shield to negate damage, giving everyone effect res doing damage himself, making enemies take increased crit damage, all the stuff he provides is extremely good. Especially if you're combining it with the fact when you attack them, they get to attack you more, so it's easier to get the follow-up attacks for Aventurin. And especially if you pair him with someone like Clara, it is so, so easy. Bushman is also really good, giving everyone max HP, crit rate, giving everyone the damage mitigation, being able to heal, being able to be immortal, everything she does is really good. I don't really have to talk about her too much because she's always been good in perfection. She's just good everywhere. Bush one is another very fantastic option. Wofo is insane as well because she's able to dispel debuffs, giving a bunch of healing, and also being able to give everyone energy and the attack increase. So no matter what team you put Wofo on, she'll be really good. And since she is the best sustain for the dot team, if you have a dot team and you put her on it, it becomes that much stronger because of the whopping 40% attack can give, the 20% energy given, and everything else she does is just extremely good. Now talking about where you'd want to use what buff, it's pretty obvious. For the first two, I would only recommend the second one if you are doing an Akron team. But that depends if you are doing a Akron team with two Nihility characters. Because if you are doing a Akron team with two Nihility characters, say if you ever E0, then you want to take this one because now you have three and you're getting this whopping 60% damage though and a 30% speed increase. But if you're someone like me, you guys E2, I took this one instead just because of the wind shear and just for the increased damage, especially because I paired her with Black Swan. That's really good. On a main dot team, this first one is going to be extremely good because you kill someone and then the dots transfer on them, which is extremely strong. And then in general, you'd probably use the second one if you are running characters that are not in a hoodie safe, you're running an Argenti Clara team. You'd probably just take this one because they can't really benefit from this unless you weakness break them. And the second one, they're not in a hoodie, or the third one, they're not in a hoodie. So you don't really want to take this one. So the second one will become an option. And yeah, that's practically it. Again, very fast video. I know, usually how I do it. Let me know what characters and teams you guys are running, what buffs you're using to give other people's ideas. And yeah, that's all I gotta say. Thank you for watching. Peace out.